we're recording and now we're going to go live on Facebook in a second. I'm going to go on Facebook also. It's preparing for live stream. Yeah, it takes a few minutes and then yeah, so just give it a sec. Wendy, you're in the cave. Congratulations. I'm in the cave. I sent out an email today that I'm opening on uh, Saturday for a few hours, and I got a bunch of people called, and they, um, are, you know, signed up. They're I'm probably gonna, so excited. I'm going to pay it by ear, and we'll see what happens. You know, it's like a, we'll see. Oh, you'll probably be overwhelmed. I think it might get busy. Okay, so streaming live on Facebook. Well, let me find you. It hasn't come up on my Facebook yet. It's still setting up on mine. Just give it a second. That's okay. All good. <laughs> Mercury's going in re into retrograde soon. Okay, so oh, that is the thing. And so you're ready to broadcast, everyone? Yeah. Okay. And all, then right. all right, so all the participants are coming in. Yes. And we are recording. I don't see it on uh, Facebook, though. On Intersource, it's it's definitely on. Um, okay. Oh, here it is. Good. I'm gonna see. I see you. So just keep that on uh, silent. And yeah. Oh no, you you good? Like. Yeah, I should be okay. 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 Are we live now? Yes, we are live. Hi, everybody. Come on in. Um, we're just waiting for a bunch of people to get here. Holy monsters, we're up to 100 people already. <laughs> oh. this, is our, this is our Tuesday night date. So That's welcome, right. everybody. We're just going to give a few more people a chance to get on. Um, as people are already saying, hi, Kim. Hello. There's a few people already jumping on the chat. Hello, ladies. Hi, everybody. Hi, welcome. everyone. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for showing up. Thank you for finding us. <laughs> Thank you. This is so exciting. You guys are great. You guys can put your questions in the chat and hopefully we will cover your, we will answer your question. I see hi, hi from Michigan. Miss you at Broward Santa. Broward Santa, Kim. That oh, was Broward. Oh, I have to put my specs on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> your uh, specs, I love it. <laughs> oh, Broward. Hello from Texas. I wish I was in Broward again. I'm in Florida, but I'm not near there. Hey, Boca. I'm right down the street, Boca. <laughs> East Northport, Hamden, okay. Kentucky. Whoa. Wow. Hamden, Connecticut. 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 I love yeah. everywhere. Great. We're all over. I love it. Good Ohio, New York City. Hey, guys. New York City strong. Yay, <laughs> Chicago. Gulfport, Florida. So there's lots of people in Florida where you are, Kim. I am in Florida right now. So we have beautiful weather. And I ran in the house so I can come and, and chat with all of you this evening with Dr. Pina. I'm so excited. Okay. Put on some lipstick because we haven't been doing that for the last three months. It was <laughs> fun. <laughs> Wow, um, Lebanon, Tennessee. That's interesting. Okay, I see Long Island. That's my other hometown. It's still <laughs> my hometown. Mineola, not far from where I live. Nice. Mineola in the house. Um, somebody just asked, is there a way to mute yourselves? Don't worry, you are all automatically muted. You're just going to hear uh, mostly uh, Kim and Dr. Pina and me just for a little bit. Um, so we're just going to give them like two more minutes. 111 participants, that's a good number. Come in, come in right now. You guys are so prompt and, and you're no. on your game and no. you guys I are ready, ready to, to roll to, on a Tuesday night. They're looking to learn. They're looking to, 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 to connect with the female energy. It's been yeah. too long, right? Yeah. It's been too long. We, could, we, we haven't been able to go out with our girlfriends to our favorite, you know, lunch places and just shoot the breeze and kind of you know bounce things off each other we miss that as as ladies that's like what we live for that's for sure yeah oh jim we're good we have some men here thank you the salt cave looks lovely thank you love 
It is lovely. Wait, I'll show you. I'm going to do a little turnaround for people to see. Look how beautiful. That's so beautiful. I miss it, Wendy. I know. I'm opening back up on Saturday, but you know, of course, social guidelines, but um, social distancing. <coughs> anybody needs it oh a couple of males here we need healing too yes we love men absolutely <laughs> I'm hoping some men would show up we need to balance out the energy and i want to hear from the men i want to hear from them yeah uh, somebody jarek jarek oh jarek we need healing too <laughs> That's for sure thomas we have a thomas good tracy's husband Oh, Richard loves your books, Kim. <laughs> Namaste. Thank you. I, I can't tell you how honored I am that, that you've read my books and that they're helping everyone, especially in this time. We, we need these, uh, this type of information. Uh, I myself go looking around to see what resonates and what, what don't I know and what can I learn. Um, so, you know, Wendy, thanks for putting this together. This, uh, of conversation. course, so you know what, in the, in the interest of time, we're going to get started straight away because we have a lot of people on and we have so much information to get to. So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. I, I just wanted to explain to you like how this all came about. Um, so I had conversations separately with um, both Kim and Dr. Pina. And the interesting thing was we would often end up at the same place with the same conclusions in these in-depth conversations. And yet they both had different training and I'm gonna have them talk to you a little bit about who they are and what they do. And I thought, wouldn't it be amazing to be a fly on the wall with these two and listen to them having a conversation about what's going on in the world. And so let me first of all um, explain to you, you know, how, what's gonna happen in the show so you understand that, you know, where are we going to end up? And, you know, what's going to happen is that we're going to take you, that right now, we're going to take you through all the tectonic shifts of the energy occurring all around us in the world. And we're going to try and, well, we're going to try and help you navigate them from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective. And you're going to hopefully leave this evening with a deeper understanding of what is happening and your role in creating a more evolved and beautiful self and a world, uh, and world, and then some real tangible tools from both um, Kim and Dr. Pino. So um, let me just introduce you to these two incredible ladies. So first of all, Dr. Pina is a naturopathic doctor and uh, acupuncturist. Um, she's been on Dr. Oz. She has a book, um, a book called, I'm going to show it to you, The Little Book of Health and Beauty Secrets. Um, so it's simple daily habits to get you glowing. And I Definitely recommend it. And uh, for Dr. Pina, can you explain to people, you know, what is a naturopathic doctor? So they have an understanding of your knowledge. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Again, Wendy, thank you so much for, for having me. And Kim, it's just an honor and delight for myself. I feel like, you know, like one of your fans as well. So I'm super <laughs> thrilled to be uh, speaking with you like this. Um, yeah, but I love talking about what I do. It's, I really, I feel so blessed that my path brought me to naturopathic medicine because as a little girl, I thought, oh, I think, you know, I knew I was, I always knew I wanted to be a doctor. I actually thought I was gonna be a pediatrician, but with my own health issues, it brought me to naturopathic medicine. So what it is, it's a four-year medical school, just like your conventional medical doctor with your MD or DO, but the focus of our training is on holistic care. So it's the same anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, but then the, the different doctors break off um, in different ways because then as with your medical doctor, your MD, you are broken up into parts. So that's why you have like a rheumatologist or gynecologist or gastroenterologist. An osteopathic doctor, they look at the musculoskeletal system and they feel like, well, if the spine isn't right or if the muscles are tight, then the nerves aren't feeding the, or the organs and the joints and that's how um, disease happens. But as a naturopathic doctor, we look at you from a completely holistic approach, mind, body, spirit. We look at you as an integrative whole. And, um, and that's what I love because it's not about suppressing the conditions or the symptoms that your body's trying to speak to you about. It's unfolding, like where's the underlying imbalance and then using natural means to help heal the body. So it's, I love this type of medicine. I feel like, 
it's essential for everyone to have a naturopath in their toolbox because again, you know, there's a time and a place for conventional medicine. Obviously, if you got hit by a truck, you don't want to be seeing me first. <laughs> you know, you want to go to the hospital or get, you know, your bones fixed. But it's it's natural medicine that you know, I really do believe is where true healing is at and also helps the body truly unfold. So it really um, allows the greatest you to come out. Love that. And I have had the, you know, the, the, the honor of being one of your patients. And I, I think that that's how medicine should be practiced. Like when you started asking me, you know, how do you sleep and do you meditate and what are you thinking? And I was like, Oh my God, this is how it should be. She really wants to know about me as a whole person. So thank you. I'm excited to see like the information you share with us. And now Kim Rousseau. So Kim is a psychic medium and a medical intuitive. Kim has um, also authored two books. This is one of them and it's your, you know, your soul's purpose. And we're actually gonna talk about this tonight because it has a lot of information about this time, which is incredible that you wrote this, you know, about a year or two ago. And it's kind of like a guidebook for now. But Kim has also been, um, just like Dr. Pina has been on Dr. Oz and many TV shows and has her own TV shows. And right now, the TV show that's just finished up, but you can still watch is Celebrity Ghost Stories. It's amazing, and you kind of watch it like this, but oh my God, it's incredible. I know both uh, Dr. Pina and I have watched it. Um, so Kim, welcome, and can you tell everybody a little bit about you also, please? Thank you, Wendy, yes. Um, well, it started quite a while ago, over 20 years ago. I started on this path. Uh, I was in real estate, actually, real estate management, mm -hmm. and I had a really good job in New York City, and I was a... Uh, um, in the management company, I was the person who would do the closings for all the condos and the, 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 the co-ops. And I thought that I really had a career in that and I, I, I enjoyed it. But as fate would have it, my soul had another plan. And um, I, I followed the plan of my soul that it's all written in the book, The Happy Medium, my first book. But what really happened to me was I had a spiritual awakening. But when I was a child, when I look back, I always knew that I would be doing something special and that somehow, some way, I was to help humanity in a bigger way where, I, where people would know my name. And uh, as a little child, I would tell my mom, mommy, I, 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 well, for lack of better understanding back as a child back then, I, I used to say to her, mommy, I'm going to be famous. And I know a lot of little children say that to their parents, uh, but whatever your children say, please pay attention because the soul has the memory of the last life it has lived. But of course, as a child, I didn't know what that even looked like. You know, back then, the only frame of reference would be uh, singers, dancers, uh, you know, maybe actresses. And I never had th those desires. Maybe, oh yes, I'm lying. Uh, would I have loved to be a singer? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> but uh, really, you know, that's not my, my calling. I can sing, but you know, like in the shower, like many people. <laughs> but long story short, fast forward, there were a lot of things that started to happen in my life, supernatural things that I could not explain. And I was raised very, very Christian in a Christian household. Um, first, originally Catholic, then mom found the, this Christian church that she felt was feeding her soul a lot more. And of course, she urged all of the family members to go to the Christian church. And I spent much of my teenage years learning about the Bible, learning about God and Christ. Um, and this is really when my gifts started to amplify, when I started to have faith and I started to live with peace and I surrendered and I, I just, I felt like I had a secret no one else knew or didn't have that I had. Uh, but as time went on and I had, I got married, I had children, um, not to mention the ghosts that I saw at the foot of my bed my whole childhood. That's, that's part of this story, but I won't get into it. Uh, long story short, I listened to the whispers of my soul and it led me directly to become a student of the spirit world. Uh, I did readings for one whole year for free with no charge, uh, word of mouth only, 
I did readings out of my home. I didn't charge people because I was learning the language. I was an, an apprentice for spirit. And as time went on, I realized that what I was able to do, with, which I teach to people every day now, is how to actually interpret and descramble the language of energy. So, every, so we have, obviously, with Dr. Pina, she connects to the same energetic field of the body that I connect to. Um, but I connect also to the spiritual body. When we leave the physical body, I'm able to connect because energy cannot be destroyed. I'm also able to connect to the body, the, the spiritual ethereal body, once the soul leaves the physical body. But while in the physical body, uh, spirit has actually taught me, and I have no medical training whatsoever, but they, they use my body as a mirror. And as I scan a, someone's body, I can actually start to feel where they are not in alignment in my, I'll feel it in my body. And I'll give my um, description as best I can for what they need to look into or what they need to address in their body. Um, and then television just kind of found me and I'm, uh, I'm an, a, a host of two television shows. Well, actually three and two books. And, and I just go where spirit leads me. I don't know what's next for me, but I know my mission is uh, only just begun. How about that? Nice. I love it because it's true. The best is yet to come. And I've also had the, the most amazing experience having you know, a reading with you and you, you were so specific. You're like, you need apple cider vinegar. And because you scanned my body and you would tell, we're not going to get into information, too much information, but it is incredible to work with both of you because it's very different and yet it's very similar. So you're right, you tapped into the same energy. So in both of you are kind of like coaches and advisors and you have this whole toolbox of all this information that you use to guide people. And so really for all of us watching right now, we just want to be a fly in the wall for a conversation between you two. So, so Kim, why don't you go ahead and, st and start, ask Dr. Pina some questions. Right? Absolutely. Well, I am a, a huge believer in uh, naturopathic medicine and anything natural that Mother Earth can actually, and has provided. There is not one issue for our health that Mother Nature has not already provided a solution. And this is why I go to people like Dr. Pina, because I want to learn what it is, uh, because everything is vibration and energy. And whatever it is that is recommended, I want to know, besides having to take a pharmaceutical, if we do have to take that, okay, but I, I found, Dr. Pina, correct me if I'm wrong, that there's almost a substitute for every pharmaceutical that we're able to take. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I, I can't agree with you more. I, I People, when they come to a naturopath the first time, you know, they really are in disbelief of like, you know, especially they first think, okay, well, you're also an acupuncturist and they think about, well, I don't have pain. Acupuncture is just for pain management. And first, that's the biggest misconception there is, you know, whether, you know, acupuncture in itself as a modality can treat, you know, migraines, digestive disease, infertility, can treat pain, autoimmune disease. So that in itself as a treatment that has been given to us is such an extraordinary gift. And then within the natural medicine world, 100%, you know, that's why I love working with the plants because the plants too, like us, like we have a vibration, every single plant has a vibration. And, you know, and so, and that's where the native traditions has taught us, this plant is for this, this is what's going to help our body. You know, and, and hundreds and thousands of years ago, people used to observe the animals when the animals were sick in a certain way, the animal would go to a plant and be like, this is what would heal them and cure them, you know, and you're, you know, with, and, you know, through the advancement of time, we figured out, oh, you know, let's say chamomile can calm the nervous system or peppermint can help with the digestive tract. Mm -hmm. but it goes so much beyond that because now with not just the botanicals, but with homeopathy and all the different nutraceuticals, as we're getting more science-based in our natural medicine, it's really quite extraordinary what, uh, 
how just how people can heal. I mean, I've been in practice for 16 years and I tell people, you know, your body has that innate ability. You just, you know, us together can tap in and, you know, cause you are inherently your own healer. And then we could find the route that's going to be best for you. That's going to decrease inflammation or decrease anxiety or decrease pain. And for me, it's amazing. It's, it's really a, an exciting profession. And, and the, the biggest thing that I want to point out, and this is what we, we were talking about, uh, I, I will be calling you Dr. Pina for the purpose of this <laughs> broadcast, but I call you Pina. Of course. Typically. Uh, but when we were chatting, um, I found it fascinating that we both agree and believe, based on the readings that I've done for so many years, that at this point in our evolution, it's actually not enough to just take a remedy and believe that you are going to be healed. Since we have found there is such a connection between emotions, emotional trauma, uh, childhood trauma that's actually stored in the body, where we tuck it away somewhere and we, we always, um, we're in distraction mode and before COVID happened and we were in these busy schedules and we, we barely had time to shove uh, a piece of, of food, uh, the chicken in our mouth or whatever, you know, uh, lunch, dinner, just on the go, you know, driving children here and there, whatever your lifestyle looks like, we've sort of saturated our lifestyles not to actually look at what is ailing us, the real thing. We, we sometimes buried it so deep that we don't even know what it is at this point. Uh, and I forgot that part of how I got started is I started out as doing hypnosis. Oh, cool. And um, people know, if you read my books, you know that my favorite test subject and my first test subject was my husband. And he was, he was the best, he still is the best case because he goes to a very deep level. Um, but that actually opened up a whole nother dimension to the spirit world and the soul. And I was able to learn about how we can actually bring trauma over, not only from our childhood, but from other lives that are embedded in our DNA and in our own souls. So I love your approach, Dr. Pina. And and it's in, in a way, it's a similar approach that spirit sort of approaches a reading. When, when people come to me, I'd rather them not tell me anything, but sometimes I do want to know, because we may be limited with time, what would they like spirit to focus on? And a lot of the times it is their health. And so what we need to, to do is become energetic investigators. Right, so you do that when Wendy said you integrate not only a remedy or a supplement, but we have to put it all together, mind, body, and spirit. Otherwise, we're not going to be in alignment and we'll never really get to the root cause of our issues and therefore, it'll take so much longer to heal. Do you agree? I agree a hundred percent, you know, and I think the issue is like from little children, we were taught that our fit, our human body was very black and white that, you know, as a little kid, I have a fever, you take Tylenol, I have a tummy ache, you know, you take this, you know, and it's very black and white. So we were ingrained growing on, growing up that, well, if I take this, I will feel better. But really what, what to me is the biggest tragedy, exactly what you're saying is that, you know, when there is that disease or dis-ease, it is the way our body is able to speak to us. So it is our time that we're able to look within ourselves and being like, what is out of balance and what isn't okay? You know, and I love to use anxiety as an example because nowadays everyone's like, okay, my neurotransmitter's off, give me, you know, give me Lexapro, give me Xanax, Ativan, like whatever it is, just to cut it out because it's that black and white fix. 
But, you know, the problem is that's what perpetuates the disease or the dysfunction over and over for years, because exactly to your point of what you're saying before, you know, this could be something that was a trauma from childhood, or even if someone spoke to you the wrong way as a little kid, and you stored that memory of insecurity or whatnot, or someone made you fall or whatever it is in your lifetime or again even past lifetimes that's creating the anxiety because i'm sure you've heard many uh, people who and you're in your profession that you know um that it's just you know they brought things in from past lives and until they're able to discover their gifts you know the anxiety or the pain is what will help you navigate your truth and find your journey and really ultimately your ultimate healing. So, you know, from, from that standpoint, you know, I do think, you know, um, because I do find that sometimes people come into the office and they want just an herb rather than a drug, but they kind of miss the whole point. It is about your overall essence and vibration and what do you need to learn? And it's, you know, it's really a time of self-discovery and ultimate healing. So, um, but I, I think it's wonderful. Oh, so when you say it's a time, I, I'm assuming you mean where we are right now, because I'm, I'm <laughs> sure we could never talk about and go on any type of broadcast right now in the middle of uh, chaos, if you would like. It, it, what it appears to look like to, in the three-dimensional world is it looks like chaos. We have a lot of housewives on here. We have a lot of women who are trying to not even, you know, maybe they don't even have children, but if they do, you know, kudos and God bless you because you're not only trying to keep yourself sane and healthy and calm, you're trying to raise productive children, trying to uh, navigate through this um, education system that has shut down for now, wanting to give them some normalcy right now. So kudos, hats off to you. Um, people that are in the midst of raising young children right now and young adults, you have, a, I want to speak to those people uh, because I'd like to share from my perspective what Spirit's been telling me uh, to tell people to help them out, to kind of help give them another angle of how to cope during these, these times. Like uh, I, I noticed somebody's message, she and it wasn't just one person. Many people are are claiming to have uh, migraines, and I and I read these uh, chat chat messages on the, on the sidebar here, and I hope you can address that at some point during our, our talk, Dr. Pina. But um, what's happening now, and I, I again, I want to give a very abbreviated spiritual perspective of what's happening a lot of people right now are not sleeping well they're they can't concentrate our routines were thrown off uh, we're, we're learning new ways to make money uh so just think as far as fight uh, or flight the adrenaline that's pretty running rampant right now with a lot of people we we i think as humans especially americans and i I'm not saying only Americans are listening to us because that's typically not the case, but especially Americans, we, we really have learned and we were programmed to have the answers overnight. And we like things to stay somewhat normal in, for whatever normal is, but our culture has taught us that nothing really, we don't get the boat rocked really. And when it does in a week, a month, it's finished. But we're getting each boat rocked over and over. Like we're, we're like taking hits every which way. Every day we're getting new information thrown at us. Um, but I am here to assure everyone, and, and again, this is the higher perspective from spirit, that we are now, number one, so lucky to be part of this shift in consciousness. So if you go through your whole day and like you've never even thought about that there's an actual spiritual shift taking place, I am here to tell you that there absolutely is uh, the collapse of a timeline, the collapse of an astrological era of Pisces. We're going into the Aquarian age. And those of you who remember that, that song, uh, what was it from the 70s or the 60s, the age of Aquarius? 
um, here we are, you know, many mystics and astrologers, they knew this day was coming where everything was sort of going to change. And the whole theme about it is unity, no seg separation, no segregation. We are all acting as one to the whole, right? So think about the worker bees or the, the, the ant colonies, you know, you know, nature has this figured out. They know how to get their jobs done in packs, in groups. And like, you don't see the queen bee saying to, you know, the, the king bee or whatever, you know, how come you don't like my color? <laughs> you know, just think about that. Uh, so I'm just trying to like put it in layman's terms where we don't know how to navigate right now. And I know you, Dr. Pina, are seeing a lot of patients who are coming to you, who you told me were on Sorry, the yeah. road to healing, and now they've had a little bit of setback because of what's been happening. Uh, and I myself have been having a lot of inquiries from people um, looking towards the heavens, uh, of course, because I'm a, a medium and a channeler. Um, but I'll give my perspective. I have so much that I can tell you, but again, we, we have but an hour to talk about all this. Uh, but if you can just stay calm and know that you are sovereign beings, we didn't come here by chance and there is no chaos. There's always divine order in the midst of chaos. But we do need some chaos to shake and rock this current system but we will in our lifetime be creating and be, we are part of this change that we're creating for the new world and the new earth for, for our children and grandchildren. Please do not think there's nothing you can do because once we start to get used to what's happening and the, the, the new stream of information that's coming at us constantly, humans adapt by sort of we're creatures of habit. So I find now that if I have the television on in the background and I'm hearing this new event, I'm like, oh, please already. Like, I don't even take this serious anymore because it's ridiculous at this point. It's like just the, re the repetition is just, we don't want to know about it anymore. So we are here to actually create a new paradigm. And I think as women, even the men that are on here, please, we can't survive without you men. We feel safer when you're around too. I'm speaking for myself. Um, but there is a higher uh, wisdom that's happening now. And there are so many light beings and the angelic realms have opened up there's all these beautiful colors in the sky that you see. Do you see the pink skies at night? Oh, yes. Those are light codes coming in from the sun and from the, uh, the, the solar systems. They are waking all of us up in our hearts. Mm. So what used to be important to most people, perhaps like money and all material things, now people are starting to look for what, what really matters in life. You know, what, what, what's, what's our purpose? What are we here for? We're not here to, you know, maybe outlive the Joneses, as they say, or have the bigger house or the, and you can have all that. But as we saw with, with the economy and with, with the health and with COVID, we can have these material fleeting things taken from us in a heartbeat. So we're all now looking for some substantial foundation so that we can feel safe, loved, protected. And so, of course, I'll speak more about that uh, later in the broadcast. But Dr. Pina, what do, you, what do you recommend or what are you finding people are coming to you now with more than ever? I think more than ever actually is the anxiety. You know, I, so I definitely think people are feeling the shift energetically, physically, emotionally. Um, so that's probably the biggest one because, you know, you, you know, from what, from what I was taught 
is that when, we, like you said, we all have a behavior, we're used to doing the same thing every day, we're used to our routine and, and what goes on day to day. So now the, the world has asked us to do something different. So it's changing our paradigm. And so, you know, we are like animals. When there is anything different, it's going to trigger our primitive brain in our, you know, our amygdala. And so then fear is going to come up. So when fear comes up, then what's going to happen? You know, we're not cut off at the neck as much as we like to think that we are. You know, then, then there's a whole slew of biochemical reactions from the body that's going to respond. So what I find is that People are increasing their anxiety, their cortisol is draining, their, their adrenal glands are being pushed. And so when with most people don't realize that our adrenal glands is what you know, gives us that, you know, from Chinese medicine, what makes us feel rooted and grounded. And when your adrenal glands are being forced to be pushed because now we're doing something different, you're going to get changes in blood pressure. You're going to get maybe some palpitations. You're going to get um, blood sugar dysregulations. You're going to get obviously the uh, insomnia or the waking at night, the fight or flight response, um, the sugar cravings, of course, that everyone's at home and everyone's like carb carbo loading right now. And unfortunately, all of that stuff does trigger more inflammation. And so, you know, when you, when I'm able to work with our patients and, and I explain to them that there is this loop system, you know, that's happening between fear and our adrenal glands, you know, what's then it's going to make us, you know, most people, they see like, well, I'm afraid. And they think of all their past fears and they get stuck there. But if you work with someone, then you could really see, like, no, this is for ultimate benefit and change. It's like, I always like to equate it to childbirth, you know, with that pain out comes something extraordinary and beautiful. So there's always that little discomfort, but then once you understand where it's coming from, it does you know, subside the fear. Um, and of course, I make the other recommendations in terms of making sure, you know, cleaning up your diet and making good food choices and that you're exercising and meditating um, and then taking some supplements. Like once you're able to do that as a collective, it brings your own vibration down and makes you more guided to be like, okay, what from the news is appropriate? What is my clear path and what would be the next steps for me uh, to move forward? Oh, beautifully said, beautifully said. And, and yeah, I, what I was hearing in, in that statement is actually take what you need and leave the rest because not everything is going to apply to your, your family or your circumstances. Uh, and I saw a, peop, a few people's comments and, and bravo to the ones that are writing that you've never been more calm or, or never have never been more happy. I've actually been hearing that as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I would love to comment on that because um, never before have we been given the opportunity to have as much time as we've had to do the things, you know, the, the spiritually awakened people or the ones that have been wanting to go more within. Uh, we now have a lot, we, or we've had a lot of time and we still have a lot of time to sort of make time to go within and to, um, a lot of spiritual awakened people are, also a little bit introverted, you know, and, I, and I'll tell you that's something that I've noticed. And the reason I say that is because most of them are very empathetic where they're, they're sponges and they can absorb the energy of other people. So they don't typically like to go out in crowds of people's vibration that they can kind of carry around and absorb. And also the mundane, um, uh, conversation is a thing of the past, like that chit chat, small talk with people. They've moved past that. Like they want to talk about, let's talk about where we're going. Let's talk about our soul. Let's talk about how we, our gifts and our powers and our, and let's empower one another. Though I'm finding a lot of that also with um, a lot of these Zoom communities uh, even the, the uh, Wendy, you were so gracious to offer to your light worker people uh, and to your, you know, um, clients, a lot of free uh, Zoom classes. That you offered that. And I don't know what I would have done without those yoga classes because we have to do this virtual now. Yeah. Um, 
But that being said, there is, depending on where you are in your wake up call, as they say, uh, because we are, the light codes are come, they're hitting us right in the heart and our hearts are being cracked wide open. So Dr. Pina, I don't know, but I can assume that you've had some people coming with fluttering and uh, maybe pains in their chest. I'm not, I think you should all get that checked out no matter yeah. what, with some type of, uh, right? Of what, EKG. Right. It's not the shortness of breath, which is really interesting if you think about the energetics of what's happening with COVID because it, they're saying, you know, it hits the lungs, right? Um, and so most people think like, oh, I must have COVID because now I can't breathe or my chest is tight or I'm going to get deathly ill and, and die and, and not be okay. Um, and so it's very interesting exactly where, you know, that it's hitting people. It's right. And, and I've even myself at, at some point in the beginning, I've had shortness of breath um, where I woke up almost like I was doing some kind of exercises for my heart chakra. But I also made a video the other day where I was telling people we are being worked on in our sleeping state. So even though you don't think you're making any kind of connections with the spiritual realms during the day, you absolutely are astral traveling out of your body at night and you're meeting your spiritual people, your loved ones who crossed over. You're going to the higher planes and you're having conversations with them. Um, you, you might wake up with all different types of emotions, but you can't really place what it means and why you feel a certain way. Um, you're being given lectures from your own spirit guides while you sleep and they know how it works when you wake up they know that your soul is retaining the information. So some people have said to me, actually, Kim, I am actually usually the most nervous Nelly type of a person, but I'm unusually calm during all of this. And I've had many people say, can you believe Kim? I am the one calming other people down. And I know a lot of these people and their personalities and I'm, I laugh and I said, I can't, I'd love to hear this. But my guess is that they're being guided when they're in their sleeping state, they're being reassured, uh, so that that's our job right now. We all are banding together, no matter what your modality is. Um, even if you're just a really good cook and you have an elderly neighbor who you know probably hasn't had a really good meal because they, could, they were just too frightened to go to the supermarket, that's how you can do your part. You don't need to be a psychic, a medium, a doctor, or have any type of degree. You can make a nice meal for an elderly person or drive them to a doctor or make them feel safe. There's, we, we can do so many things right now as humans to be part of the collective shift of, and raising of, of consciousness. Um, so Dr. Pina, I, I do myself take ashwagandha. Did I say ashwagandha. it right? Ashwagandha. Ashwagandha. Uh, I, I saw a couple of people asking what kind of teas or what kind of natural herbs would you recommend just to kind of get them into that maybe calm place where they actually can meditate or do yoga. Can you, can you help us out with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, I'm always going to say first, I mean, always be mindful of your diet, because when you're eating foods like tons of sugar and carbs, you could be taking the best highest quality supplements on the planet. They're not going to work as well if you really have a junky diet. So I my plea is, <laughs> you know, organic whole foods as much as you can, and really minimizing, you know, the, the sugars, because that will diminish some of that, uh, cortisol response in itself without even having to, you know, pay for anything. Cause you know, obviously finances are really tough for a lot of people right now. So, you know, food is an extraordinary healer, even if you can't afford uh, supplements, but um, ashwagandha is one of my favorite botanicals with regards to adrenal gland health. Um, Cause the reason why I like it, not only does it help tonify the adrenal gland, it's really amazing for your immune system and for cognitive thought. So it really works on those layers of our body to, um, you know, balance us out in extraordinary ways. Um, you know, some people 
are, are botanical sensitive. So then I always recommend something like a, a nutrient like GABA, which works on that, um, that anxiety pathway and helps calm down our neurotransmitters. Um, the other thing is theanine. Theanine comes from green tea. And you know how like the monks can sit and meditate for hours and hours is because they drink tons of green tea that's very high in the theanine, which is amazing. Um, you know, so then, and then simple things like, you know, there's chamomile, there's valerian, there's passion flower. Um, again, working with, um, you know, foods to help you calm down. The ashwagandha is great. Uh, licorice is amazing. There's another botanical called Eleutherococcus. So, I mean, there's a whole world out there um, of what, you know, that again, Mother Nature has given us options that we can add to doing everything else. Good. I want to give a disclaimer that um, some of these herbs might be better well, absorbed, maybe, you know, so well, you have to Definitely. I would definitely say licorice if you have blood pressure issues or cardiac issues, that's probably not the one to take or definitely not the one to take. But, you know, if you can consult with somebody, um, you know, but definitely right. do your research. That's I always tell, you know, it's it's always best to work with a practitioner because that's the thing. There's so many different nuances uh, in the natural medicine world that, you know, if, again, if you don't want to take a supplement and you'd rather get an acupuncture treatment or Reiki or craniosacral, there, there are tons of things that you could either do to yourself, for yourself, or go see someone now. Right. Uh, you know, well, it's true because I didn't know any of that existed until I uh, was introduced to all of it. And it's, it, it has changed my life. All of those modalities, uh, you wouldn't, you would be surprised because we have, uh, remember energy is my language and we have meridians in our body. They're, yeah. they're electrical grids. Like you mm -hmm. would see any kind of fuse panel, right? When you have a fuse box in your, in your home. Uh, and what, what I wanted to point out now is, um, Let's put aside what's happening in our world, but let's talk about what's been happening for many years now, but we are in the thick of it right now. And, and someone on the feed uh, talked about the Schumann resonance. I would like to bring that up because what, what is now happening in our world, for those of you who do not know, AKA the spiritual shift, it's also known as uh, the ascension, uh, the great awakening. So the earth itself has an, a heartbeat and she has a heart chakra and she has a pulse. She has an electromagnetic field. And there are scientists out there that know about this, always known about this. And, and they measure the pulse of the planet. And they've noticed that the pulse of the planet along with the light codes that have been bombarding us because they're helping wake us up because we were never meant to be sleeping beings. We, we were dumbed down by society, by the government. We were dumbed down by our learning, by our education system. Uh, they really kind of never wanted us to know our power and what the body can do and what the body is supposed to do. We are avatars. Mm -hmm. So when we connect, connect to the higher realms, there's nothing we cannot do. We are healers like you said uh, dr pina we are natural healers in our own right mm -hmm. and our minds get in the way of uh, limit our potential we limit our own selves but when we talk about the ascension what's happening to our nervous systems and our bodies our energetic pulse is also rising up with the earth the light codes are helping along from the sun so we're, th there's what's called ascension symptoms, where a lot of people feel like they have a flu. But please, always get checked out. I, don't, I want you all to be safe and sorry. But when you start to notice, or you might have already been experiencing ascension symptoms, which is you, we're turning more into lighter, li lighter bodies. Uh, we were dense with the 3D. We were in three-dimensional realm. That's where we were born many, many years ago, unless you're very young right now. 
but in that case, I don't think you're on this broadcast. But we were born into the three-dimensional, very dense, lowest material level. Now we can't help, we're not doing it even consciously, some of us. We're just going, it's a, it's a natural byproduct as the earth is rising up, her vibration, we're going along with it. So when, once our hearts open as a, as a you know, byproduct of that, we are able to shoot into the higher realms, but the, our dense bodies are letting go of things right now. Triggers, uh, emotional body. We have to clear the emotional body right now. That's why people who have been working in jobs for over 20 years can't take it anymore because it was never meant for our bodies to do that. We were meant to serve. We were meant to create. We were meant to work in unity as the worker bees to help raise the collective consciousness. So whether you want to do it or not, that's where we're at. So what do they say? If you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> um, but the ascension symptoms are very, very real. And I will be the first person to announce my symptoms that I've had for years, which is actually what turns me on to naturopathic medicine. I've had fatigue. I've had upper shoulder fatigue. Um, I feel like my energy, not my energy from sleep, my chi, right, which is my life force, is sort of compromised. Um, so I'm very careful how many readings I do because it takes your life force away. Uh, so I, so as much sleep as I get, I can wake up very, very, very tired. But I feel like I'm almost past this now because I'm, I'm starting to feel back to my old self and even better. And I'm, I'm not craving the foods I used to crave, like the heavy meats. I'm craving quenching uh, foods, like, like nice juicy fruits, mm -hmm. oranges, watermelon, cucumbers, things. I, I feel like my body's almost on fire and I need to quench my inner light. Right, those are, they're all, the, all the foods oh, that you're looking for are cooling foods. Well, I'm just saying this to, to maybe see if other people have been um, actually going through the same symptoms and most likely those are ascension symptoms because we're actually turning into light bodies. So we need more water, we need more electrolytes right now, much more hydration. And I don't think water is the best hydrator. Um, I think that's a misconception. But Dr. Pina, could you, could you talk to that, that you're, that's your expertise. Yeah, um, yeah, and I also have a question for you because so I don't want to forget my question. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw the answer to you and then ask you the question of, you know, with these ascension symptoms, I know I saw it on someone's uh, chat as well. How long do you think the symptoms? Because I know, like when I have a patient comes in, comes in, they want to be better tomorrow, and I'm like, well, this is a process and it takes some time. You know, the body, you know, whether it could be three months or six months, or depending on you know someone's condition, it could take even a year, depending uh, on what's going on with someone. Um, so I definitely want to ask you from from your experience, like how long for you personally as well as what other people could expect. Um, but yeah, I I do find that especially because the adrenal glands are being tanked and being pulled upon more. What I am having um, patients do is actually drink more electrolyte water or using very pure Celtic sea salt and doing a quarter teaspoon in some water and drinking that a couple times a day to help feed the adrenal glands so that you can ultimately really hydrate, you know, besides just having the water. Yes, perfect. That That's what I do as well as, um... I take supplements very, very high in uh, natural minerals. Yes. Uh, like a, uh, a variety of minerals because our soil is so depleted. What, what so many, that? It's really it's, tragic. It's, it's with the industrialization and the globalization. They use the same soil over and over and over and over. Right, right, there's no rotation of the crop. So like I tell when I, when I do a lot of lecturing and I tell patients, if you take one carrot, 
the, the vitamin and mineral content from a carrot from let's say the 1940s, 1950s, and to a carrot right now, still organically grown, you have only a fraction of the nutrition in the organic carrot right now. So we really do need to replenish uh, either with a mineral complex, with additional electrolyte, you could do coconut water, watermelon water, or take it, or, or even like a greens complex that's very high in minerals. Because, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I eat clean, do I, I don't really need to take supplements. But unfortunately, with the environmental burden of what's going on, plus the, uh, the depletion of our soils and the increased stress load, we go through vitamins like this and this, and when you don't have them, this is where inflammation and disease happen. So I definitely feel right now as everyone is making their shift and, and ascending, um, uh, incorporating more supplementation is as very healing. And I know a lot of the patients in our practice have done extremely well with COVID, either haven't gotten it or have had minimal symptoms or just really resolved it using the additional support. Yeah, and it's true. Mother Nature gave us all the minerals that we need in her foods and her veggies. But uh, then again, you know, man, man has gotten into the farming industry with uh, a lot of greed in mind and even the organic is not as organic as right. we think it is so keep that in mind people too and um you know wash everything in like a nice vinegar or white vinegar or apple cider vinegar and water uh, but i want to answer the question about each person will be ascending at a different vibratory rate and i believe that a lot has to do with uh, their, their spiritual awakening now this is very different than re being religious I want to really drive that point home because a lot of people on here may be like, well, I don't know, I have to go back to church. No, that's not what this is. This is about becoming who you are, you who you are, not who you were told you were, you know, even with the label that we're given as a name on our, on our birth certificates, but the actual vibratory person light being that you are so it has to do with when will you be woken up when will your one eye open and then two eyes open and then the heart opens and then you shoot up like like i said like a rocket to the to the heavens and you you can start you know some some of these people that see these really interesting um crafts in the sky my left ear just got the loudest ring out of no, wow that's wild just had to mention that uh but people that claim to see what whether it be ufos or weird occurrences in the sky which i've never seen uh, a lot of them are very they're working consciously from a very high uh, frequency and we all could get there um you know the the great masters of our times and the mystics they learned how to go to the high frequency they worked through the heart chakra and they, they were miracle workers. They, they really could walk on water. They really could walk through fire and levitate. That's not a myth. Uh, they just realized their power. And we are actually going to be realizing our power. So I want to say your ascension symptoms will last as long as if you allow and surrender, that's my best advice. In each moment, because I saw some people's comments how do I surrender? How do I not be afraid? Right. We are sovereign beings. We will, we can, first of all, we can never die. We have the light on our side more than any darkness can ever, ever, ever take control. Now, when you think about how do you, when you walk into a dark room, all it takes is one flip of a switch to turn on the light. So the higher you turn on your light and you stay in a positive mode and you know that there's always a better plan and no matter what happens, don't go to the 3D thinking, which is the um, material world, which is the fear-based thinking. Go to the higher parts of yourself. Go to times in your life where things worked out. You don't know how they worked out, but they did. You have help. We all have help. Um, and I'm giving you such an abbreviated version, but I did write extensively about all of this in my second book, Your Soul Purpose. Uh, so we sort of have to, we're in a deprogramming mode. 
as we ascend. And I love to hear everybody's stories. And thank God there's people like Dr. Pina who could, you know, she's holistic as well. So she knows what what you're going through and she understands the spirit. So that's that's what I want. (laughs) What's that? I said, I try my best. Well, that's important. I've gone to traditional doctors and they, they tell me, Nah, you don't need vitamins. You get enough from the food you eat. I've actually been told that. I believe that. I've I've heard everything. And and the worst thing that I find is that a pa- like I like I said earlier in our conversation, you inherently are your own healer. You know your own truth and you know what's right. I've heard many people are like, I know something's wrong with me. I know something's wrong with me. And the doctor dismisses, dismisses. Like I find this a lot with women who have thyroid issues and they're told that you know, you're overworked, you're, you're crazy, you need just a, you know, um, a psychological drug. But, you know, what I find, um, I just lost my train of thought. Ah. Oh, when they, they tell you. Oh, that basically it's when you go to the conventional world, it's like you have to be your own healthcare advocate. So you know your truth. And if, it, if that doctor is not, you know, helping you, then you find someone else or even in the natural medicine world, in the natural medicine world, there's so many beautiful practitioners, but everyone again has their own different nuance of where you are at and in your own healthcare at that time. But, you know, absolutely, I would say, you know, listen to your truth and, you know, find a practitioner or the psychic or whoever that's going to help guide you along your journey the best way possible. Yeah. And, and, I always like to tell people because their their biggest question to me is, which crystal should I buy? Which um, book should I read? What music should I listen to? I don't like to give recommendations because everybody has an innate knowledge of what they're drawn to. Uh, Sometimes the book picks you. Sometimes the crystal picks you and the doctor picks you. You'll know, you'll know, like if somebody's name keeps coming up, it's like, okay, spirit, I got you. I hear you loud and clear. You know, we, we have to learn how to look for the signs around us. Uh, and we, we do have to, they, our angels also want us to ask for their help. They're waiting to assist us. And that's different from a spirit guide. The, the guide keeps you on the right soul track. The angels are like the assistants. Like, okay, what could, like the genies in the bottle, you know, what could I do for you today? Uh, the parking angels, trust me, that works. And <laughs> just try it, try it, people, ask. They want you to ask because they can't really interfere with your free will. But when you say, I need assistance here, and there's an angel for everything, everything, you can't imagine, and they will assist you. So I like to tell people, try it as an experiment. I love experimenting. And then, um, then I love to tell my stories of um, real breakthroughs and what to me are miracles. Uh, so once we go through the heart and the ascension, we actually become miracle workers. That is the key and the secret to manifesting anything you want. Um, but at the same time, when you do that, you have to sort of, you really have to leave the fear out of it. You cannot have faith and fear in the same thought because what it will cancel each other out okay and yes we have bad days and i we all do even the people that know better like oh, oh you know, we stop breathing heavy and like oh what if what if i lose a job or what if i don't have money and then they're like wait okay that's ridiculous that's only in the 3d i'm going higher i'm going to the higher realms and that's where we need to stay and that's where the higher vibration is and we all can do it and we all have to be a support system for one another. You know, we don't, again, we don't have to be religious. We want to empower each other. So start a little community in, in, your, in your town, in your school, in your workplace. Start a little women's group or men and women. We need each other now. It's, those days of listening to the people on TV are finished. We, they're, they're leading us right to hell. And I will say that. We have to listen to the people that are in, in a similar alignment to our own vibration. Some of you have to let go with some friends right now, some okay. you know relationships. I'm sorry to say it, but 
that's we all have to do the work right now. You know, you wouldn't want to, a college graduate wouldn't want to hold a kindergartner's hand through life. It, it gets, it, it wears on you after a while. You're like, okay, come on. It's time to graduate. Come on. Are you going to stay in kindergarten your whole life? So that's the best way of, of analogy that I like to give people. Oh my God, I could ramble life. forever, but. No, it is so amazing. I love that one. And I... <laughs> right? Is it true? It's so true because the funny thing is then people question themselves and and it's funny because especially women, you know, we question our sense of loyalty, like you don't want to be deemed as bad or a mean person, but you really want to do that self-evaluation of like, well, I'm just past where this person is and there's no more common ground. And it's like, you never want to bring yourself back down. Not that you can't assist others, but again, sometimes, you know, when someone's down here and you're here and you're trying to explain to them what you're feeling and thinking up here because you've ascended in a way, they they just can't hear it don't quite understand what you're saying not that they're trying to be difficult or rude or anything but it just doesn't register and i think you know i, I have found when i work working with my patients too that they are finding this process of you know shedding and releasing you know whether again fr friendships partners and and whatnot let's face it we can't shed family members no I don't actually even mean that. And what I want to reiterate to people is um, everyone in your family, people you love dearly, let me just say it like that, in their own time, they will ascend. Everyone's ascending. They, mm -hmm. they can't not ascend. The problem is, do they have an open mind? Are they working completely from their ego? Or if they say to you, teach me, I wanna learn. And then I'll, they use their own discernment right. and then whatever resonates with them. So you have to have patience as well. But when you have the people that are the victims and they want to continue to plug into your energy because they don't want to do the work, mm -hmm. those are the type of people I'm saying that the, the vibration of the ascension will not support those types of people. The, the earth is saying Everyone has a role to play and we can't piggyback off anybody else anymore. And this codependency, um, the vibration and the frequencies will not sustain it and it will not support that kind of behavior. Mm -hmm. So um, it's kind of a good, good thing. So look for the people to just maybe even just disappear and you may not even have to do a thing. The universe will do it for you. Wow. That's a brilliant line to stop because, okay, it's already 8.06. This conversation, I mean, guys, whoever's watching, can you just type in, if you like this, can you just type in a yes on the chat just so we know that you've enjoyed this conversation? Oh, that's, that's, yes, yes. that's beautiful. Thank you. Oh, wow. I, I, Three letters is easy to type very fast. Oh, oh, thank you guys. But okay, so I just wanted to say a couple of things. First of all, I mean, being a fly on the ball with you two is beyond incredible. There is so much information in this and we are going to, there's a recording. We're gonna post it on YouTube. Please everybody go to Rose and Soul Cave YouTube, subscribe. We're trying to build up our, our you know, followers. But um, I just want to tell you a little bit, if you want to get it, people are asking, what can I get hold of? Thank you, everybody. Can um, I, I, I found a holistic doctor? Yes, 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 love. Dr. Peter's right there. She sees clients. Um, she, you can find her at Inner Source Health, and that information will also be, I'll send a follow-up email to all of you with the information of how to get hold of Dr. Pina. Uh, like her on Facebook, you know, um, her page, her website. If you want to book her, great, you can get hold of her. And then Kim, just like, you know, what you guys were saying, the, the potential for where we're going is so open right now. And just like all of us are ascending, so are you two, and there's so many, things that you're doing. So like Kim, you're going to be offering training courses and, um, you know, who knows, lectures, events, who knows if there's another book for both of you. So guys, follow Dr. Pina, follow Kim Rousseau, watch uh, Celebrity um, Ghost Stories. It's incredible. It very also, great. Um, a little bit, you know, about the Soul Cave, everything you were talking about, the community, you know, the, the different healers, you're finding the right healer. We offer that at the Soul Cave, you know, and this is not about me like doing a sales pitch it's what i truly believe i have you know you kim and you dr pina and other people who do like sound healing and teach meditation and energy healing and reiki and 
there's so many opportunities to get healing and to come to a community where people really care. So if you if you don't if you're around and you can't create your own, come to us. We're opening another one in California, um, or you know follow us on YouTube. We are we going to put as much of this kind of information as possible, and you know hopefully there'll be more with you guys. I, I just want to point out that uh, Wendy Salt Cave that she's broadcasting from is in Long Island, New York. Yes. Oh, thank you, love. Those people who are wondering, <laughs> where can I go? Where can I go? And then one in California. Uh, I don't know. You'll Woodland have that Hills. information too, Wendy, I'm yeah. sure. That's in Woodland Hills, and it's opening in a couple of weeks. So, <gasps> holy monsters. Um, anyway, so guys, thank you everybody who followed us and who's watched this and um, you know participated and asked all these amazing questions. And Kim and Dr. Pina, thank you guys for your time and for doing this for free. You know, like giving us this valuable information. I saw so many people who related to the, um, you know, to the symptoms you were talking about. And they're like, oh my God, I feel normal. Oh yes, that makes sense. Like, uh, you know, I'm having headaches, I'm thirsty, I've, I've been feeling right. anxious. So you guys gave real tangible tools on first of all, that we should feel normal. And second of all, that there's help. So- Oh, there's always help, always help. I see people saying, oh, I need help, I need help. Um, I, just, I do want to just let everybody know that at this current time, I am not taking new clients for private readings, uh, just in case I see people asking. However, I do, I do plan on offering um, Zoom readings, like groups, because I can't do them in person right now. I do, I do a lot of groups in person, but because of the, the COVID restrictions, I will be offering Zoom readings for a select amount of people. Uh, for future reference for that, you can go to my website at kimthehappymedium.com and look under um, services, uh, you'll, you'll find me and I have a, a store there. But but I also will be teaching Zoom classes, online classes, uh, development, uh, development, ascension classes. There's so much to learn right now. And if you are someone who has your spirituality um, peaked, if you're anything like I was in the beginning, you will not be able to get enough of this. So thank you for joining us. Um, One more thing, guys, I forgot, you know, this book is really, it's a guidebook to what's happening here. Kim has like soul kits at the end of each chapter that you can work through and you can, you know, manifest your dreams and your, your wishes and your life. So really look for this book, go to Dr. Pina, uh, follow, you know, follow both of them. And thank you, everybody. Dr. Pina, anything you want to add, give us your, your website or your yeah, you can uh, follow us at uh, innersourcehealth.com. We put out a lot of, um, we've been doing actually a lot of free webinars as well on COVID and just building your immune system or on any health issue. We've just been trying to put out as much good information as possible. So uh, Inner Source Health has a YouTube page. You can follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. And then I also have my own um, Dr. Pina Lojudice page you could from inner source you could find me there um and actually my book the little book of healthy beauty actually has some great um it's a great mini little guidebook that if you want to have a great beginning start of where in your health you need most direction i have a little questionnaire at the end of each chapter so i think it's a fun little quick read and um and you also may find me at the salt cave <laughs> and so um just those are all pretty much all areas that you could find me for right now. Thank you. You'll find me at the Salt Cave too as soon as Woo I get to New York. Thanks, Kim. That Come is. already. Okay, everybody. Right. Thank right. you. We'll Have a good welcome. night. <laughs> and um, everybody stay safe and keep ascending. Namaste. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Love you all. Bye bye. <laughs> okay.